Alright guys, PW here once again, and I'm doing a set of videos, uh, a few videos actually, I'm going to be devoting to the height uh, speakers, and uh, it's become popular nowadays to convert the home theater into a Dolby Atmos DTSX type uh, setup where you're using object-based surround sound as opposed to object-orientated surround sound, so that means one thing, that means uh, setting up height channels, uh, height speakers, um, that's the best way you're going to get the experience uh, with the object-based surround sound, and it's become so popular these days that a lot of people have questions, and uh, it can be confusing as to what speakers to use, how to place them, how to hook them up, you know, where to put them and all that. Uh, so I'm going to be devoting a few series of videos on this, and I wanted to start out with uh, Sound and Vision to give us a basic understanding of uh, what are the best speakers to use. A lot of times in my videos you have heard me say that uh, you got three choices. Many people say you've got two, but you've got three choices. You've got installing in-ceiling speakers, which is the most common. Uh, actual in-ceiling speakers that fit in the ceiling. You cut out a hole and fit them in, wire them in and everything, uh, which, you know, can probably be the most difficult. Uh, then you got up-firing Dolby Atmos speakers, which are even worse than the in-ceilings. Um, that's horrible, man. That's, that's fake, you know. It's just, it's not the real way to do it. it. It doesn't work real well. I've heard it. It was the first type of deal that came out, um, you know, to just integrate it. But they can be expensive, and they're not that great. You know, they're low-powered speakers um, that fire upwards. And depending on the room, if you don't have a perfect room design, it ain't going to work. It's just not going to work, guys. I got a pretty big ceiling here, so the height speakers work out great. Uh, you know, 9, 10 feet is recommended for height speakers, uh, so at this property it kind of works out pretty good. The basement's tall too, so dedicated theater, you know, would work great, but, uh, you know, almost the bigger the ceiling the better, uh, but too big, you know, can, can create an issue too. But uh, can I use dipole speakers as Atmos height speakers, somebody asks, in Sound and Vision. Uh, so that takes us to Sound and Vision's website, but before we do that, before we get into it, let's just take a look at this. This is from Audioholics, so I'm going to go up real quick and take a look here. Um, and it's dipole versus bipole versus monopole. Which surround speakers are, are best? Um, you know, you know what bipole speakers are, uh, multiple directions and whatnot. Um, but you know, let's take a look here. Uh, right off the bat, I would say no. Those aren't going to work. I mean, really, honestly, any speaker that's got two terminals on the back is going to work as height speakers. Um, but what works best? As I started talking about before, you got three choices. Well, you got your Atmos up firing ones, you got your in ceiling speakers, then you got the best choice out there. The best choice is using a regular, generic, enclosured speaker. A regular speaker. Um, leave the bi amping, tri amping speakers out of it. Um, it's going to be best to just use regular generic enclosure type speakers so a regular speaker uh yes it's better if you can get one with a um a, you know some sort of clip on the on the back of it um something that makes it easy to hang up um but it you know not all speakers do uh, some of them have little uh threaded holes in them usually on the quarter thread type pattern, and you can use those SVS speaker mounts I've showed you before. You can use multiple other speaker mounts. They sell them on Amazon. Uh, but mounting the speakers is great. Uh, you know, it's the best way to do the height speakers. But looking up here, we got, I'll kind of read this to you, Adobe Atmos 3D Moving Audio with an object-based listening experience. Audioholics has covered the new technology extensively since last year and requires at the least four additional speakers. These speakers can be either ceiling installed or use specific Atmos enabled surrounds placed on stands at head level with one way of drivers. Firing upwards towards the ceiling to reflect the effect and another array of direct radiating speakers aimed at the listeners. Now, although Dolby seems to avoid addressing the use of dipole surrounds in conjunction with an Atmos system, I have found at least one reference on the Dolby site that states that dipoles won't work well for Atmos. I find it problematic that the implied suggestion by Dolby is that consumers should remove their de facto dipoles and replace them with surround speakers on stands. That's not a minor issue, and it affects a large portion of people who have home theaters which feature dipole surrounds. So in my opinion, guys, or suggestion, keep the dipole speakers as surrounds, but use the enclosure type speakers as the heights. Let's go back to Sound and Vision here and uh, see what they tell us. They're always a good 
you know, credible recommended source. Um, and the guy asks, I currently use dipole speakers as surrounds on a 7.1. My plan is to upgrade to Atmos and replace the side surrounds with direct radiating models. Okay, I would do it the opposite, but here's my question. Can I use existing dipole surrounds as Atmos heights? Question pops up regularly, and more audio files, you know, more theater files uh, upgrade their systems for Atmos. The same answers I've offered in the past still stands no. Okay, so I agree with him. Uh, but my suggestion to this guy would just be, hey, don't upgrade the surround speakers. Uh, keep the surround speakers at dipole and upgrade the height speakers with direct radiating, of course. Let's see what they say, though. Why? Because Dolby recommends using AHA direct radiating speakers at all positions, surround and ceiling height locations included for Atmos setup. Object-based Atmos soundtracks require individually addressable point sources to deliver the immersive experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was designed for, that the format was designed for. The task is best handled by direct radiating speakers, which have a focus, precise sound. A focused, precise sound, guys. Dipole speakers, you know, in contrast, create a diffuse uh, sound field that's meant to mimic the multi-speakers array used in order. Uh, Pre-Atmos theaters... Mm -hmm. In other words, while they were arguably still usable in channel-based configurations, dipole surrounds are a relic in new object-based audio world. Uh, so, you know, that's... When we go to this other um, site here at Electronic House, just looking at some stuff, bipolar surround speakers are so rare, and yeah, you know, Sandra, blah, blah, blah. The real choices between dipolar and direct radiators. Like bipolars, dipoles feature two set of drivers firing in different, uh, you know, often opposite directions. Unlike bipolar speakers, the driver and dipoles aren't moving in and out at the same time. So, okay, we got that down. Uh, this is a good site, actually, for setting up the speakers in general, because what we get here is if you read... Uh, here, for a 5.1 sound setup, the reasonable placement for direct radiating speakers is the typical forward-firing speakers that immediately comes to mind, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but slightly behind you, the surround speakers, 110 degrees from the screen. Uh, so if you're looking at the screen, zero degrees, it's telling you, directly to the left or right of you, 90 degrees, just kind of make an angle outward, you know. Um, and then your circumference is pretty much from center, you know, listening position on out. So, uh, 110 behind you. Keep on going another 20 degrees after 90. Yep. Um, you know, so it's... This is a great site for setting up the surround speakers, guys. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the the dipole or bipole um, aren't the best that Dolby recommends. So, um, as I said before, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos devoted to the height speakers and how to do so, what to use and whatnot. Uh, but this is kind of the starting point for that. Just checking out a few of the best websites, a few of the best sources here and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next up, I'm going to be having something based on hooking some of the equipment up. Um, but more or less, we're going to jump to Sound and Vision, and uh, I'm going to address this question here. Why does my receiver default to DTS Neural X mode? So if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. I'll have a ton of stuff coming on the height speakers and the Atmos DTSX type stuff and converting the theater or system or how to get the best uh, performance out of your system when, uh, when using a configuration as such. So don't forget to subscribe, guys, and take care.